Hello everyone and welcome back to the Shizen Hogoku Zoo here on Planet Zoo in our franchise mode. Today we are taking advantage of the Southeast Asia Animal Pack DLC which just came out to Planet Zoo and we are going to be completing a habitat speed build on the Malayan Tapirs. I really like these guys but before I start talking about the habitat and our plans I kind of want to talk about more of the zoo overall. Some people may be starting their zoos up new today but for me I've been working on the Shizen Hogoku Zoo for quite some time which kind of more focuses on the China and more specifically the Japan region um, when it comes to a theme for the zoo. Although Japan is very small and doesn't have a ton of animals, we are focusing on a larger scale when it comes to most of East Asia, kind of stepping away from maybe the Indian region a little bit, focusing more on the other areas of Asia. And especially when it comes to the tropical region of Asia as well. So that's kind of what we're focusing on for this zoo um, for any new viewers. But in terms of what I'm going to be planning on for the continuation of the zoo, we are going to be doing a lot of renovations when it comes to a lot of habitats because some of them just need some help. So we will look forward to that in the future. However, since this DLC just came out, we're going to start focusing on some of these new animals and basically doing a complete overhaul renovation to a completely empty area uh, which basically is a renovation it's more of an addition so we're going to be mainly focusing on that so when i talk about this habitat i want to mention two paths uh, the first path is going to be located by the garial habitat and the monorail station which is our main path so far it's not the one that i just added it so that's going to be path one when i start talking about how we're going to be planning out this area path two is the new one that i'm working on right now which is where we're going to be placing on some of our educator stations when it comes to this zoo. Now, I haven't used the educators yet when it comes to any of my zoos, so I'm really excited to bring educators into this area. We're going to make this a work area or a work zone, so most of our staff are going to be assigned to this area or specified for this area, considering this is going to become an official section of our zoo. As of right now, basically everything else is one big hub, and there is a section to the right of the zoo which you can't see in this zoo, uh, but there is a section to the right which is very messy, which is something that we will be fixing in the future. However, when it comes to this habitat, we are adding in quite a few things that kind of makes it a little bit more unique compared to the, some of the previous habitats we've been building. I am gonna be focusing more on a null barrier when it comes to this habitat. Uh, I would say maybe about 40% is at maximum is actually a solid barrier when it comes to this habitat. I want to try to avoid you know, a large consistency of just wood around the perimeter of this habitat. So we kind of have three viewing areas. One is from path one, our main pathway um, for the rest of the zoo, which is just kind of an overlook area for people that are just kind of walking by it may catch their interest. Maybe they will start walking to path two to view the rest of the area with our future other species, which I think would be very beneficial. And then we have two viewing areas. One is a windowed viewing area if you wanna see the tapirs up close in the water. And then our third viewing area is our main viewing area, which is where our educator will be standing to lecture people on uh, the tapirs. So just to note, we don't have our educator active yet. We will activate our educator once we start adding in some new habitats uh, for our Southeast Asia animals. As for the habitat itself, we do add in quite a few enrichment items. Uh, the space in it, or should I say the land space in this area is barely just passing for our uh, requirements for these animals. And the water space is quite decent for these animals as well. So they are happy with that. The only thing that they aren't happy with is our hard shelter, which is what I'm currently building now. At first, I started making something that didn't quite work out. I was trying something new that would look very nice from path one. If people were to walk by, it kind of just had a neat design to it. But I ended up just doing something a little bit more simple to prevent any um, weird shapes and weird scenarios that I wanted to try to avoid. So we just ended up making it simplistic at the very end of this anyway. I will say the Malayan tapirs are allowed to be with, I think about four other 
uh, animal species that comes with this DLC pack. So we will be building a very, very large habitat at some point where all these guys are in one habitat. Now these guys will only have one habitat today in this video because it will allow for me to put them lion tap ears in our larger habitat and give them a separate space for when it comes to uh, basically mating reasons. Because these guys don't like to have any more than two adults in a habitat. So that's the reason why we will be splitting them up in the future. I think that habitat will look pretty cool, but nonetheless, we're gonna get back to this habitat that we're talking about and start talking about some other plans. I will say that I've already gotten started with the Garial habitat along with also the red panda habitat. They are having some issues, or should I say that there's just some issues overall in that area, especially with the red pandas. We're gonna have to do a complete overhaul within that section where we just completed our Japanese macaques. Uh, habitat. So we do have some other things coming to this zoo, but I want to try to focus on this section of the zoo. It's really going to be complicated because the red pandas are hating their lives. So we're probably just going to um, release them into the wild, send them to another zoo, and get some uh, conservation credits off of them because we are doing an awful job with management in that. And we'll come back to maybe completing a new habitat for them in the future. However, this habitat does have uh, partially null barrier. Most of that is completed with rock as we didn't really have to do too much else. We do add in some fencing which you will see later when it comes to uh, viewing area number one and viewing area number three which is basically the two other viewing areas except for the window section and those two viewing areas will have a fence. It is something a little bit different compared to some of the other fences that we've done across the park so we are trying to do a little bit of a variation when it comes to fencing around this area. Also off camera, you will not be seeing me adding in the trimming when it comes to just the little area when it comes to the wooden barrier along the uh, perimeter of this habitat. So I'll do that off camera because it's something that I've been doing in every other habitat. Also, I did kind of forget that I have to add in a a doorway for our staff to actually go in and help out our tapirs when necessary. So I actually have to add it in at some point and you'll see me doing that as kind of more of an afterthought. Also I had an education board that came from the center of our park. I had it near our food court for some reason. So I ended up just taking it away and bringing it over to this section where I had a little bit of a gap in the pathway. It worked perfectly. We had a little bit of a gap and this filled it up perfectly. I don't think there's gonna to be too much collision when it comes to our guests walking over to this area, which will be fantastic. On one side of the board, I do have two conservation boards and on the other side of the little structure, I do have an educational board when it comes to the species of this habitat. Later, I also end up adding in an educational speaker. So it is a very nice point in which people can walk over and get a little bit of um, an educational boost in that area. Although it is not our main viewing area, I try to add the same amount of resources on the other side. The only thing that we don't have is the conservational boards, uh, but we do have the educational speaker standpoint, whatever you want to call it, where our educator will be standing to educate people as they walk by. I also did consider adding um, a little bit of a null barrier when it came into adding in a different kind of wooden barrier but I ended up taking it out, it was kind of useless. I just take the wooden barrier that we used for our viewing area number two, uh, where our glass is, and I try to extend it over to our rocks. At one point it was too, too squared off around the corner, so I end up adding in some concrete barrier and then I switch it over to the wooden barrier so we can actually get in a nice curve to that area. I try to avoid this as much as I can as it's not really a huge, is it's kind of more of a thing that you shouldn't be doing in Planet Zoo, but I did it anyway, um, just because I thought it looked better. So I take advantage of the system when it came to that. We also add in some more rock when it comes to our enrichment food item box, just to finish off the area. The only thing that we need to do next is actually get in our fencing. But first we're gonna take care of the habitat needs of these guys. We just brought in our tapirs and they need some bedding and we need to adjust the terrain 
when it comes to the dirt, the grass, and everything else in this area. And it looks quite nice. The only thing that we're missing now are some plants. So we fill in the foliage and we try to make this place look as nice as possible. And that's about it for our tapirs. So the rest of the video is just really gonna be adding in some little detail with all that other stuff. As you can see, I added in the fencing, which looks quite nice in my opinion. It's very simplistic and it works out quite nice on the rock. It looks like it's man-made, but is used of natural element, which kind of looks very nice in my opinion. Other than that, we just add in some more foliage uh, to make sure that our habitat looks very nice and clean. And for the most part, we add in quite a few trees toward the middle and it kind of blocks off the viewing from one side to the other. So um, over by viewing area number one and three, you can kind of see each other. So we try to throw in some trees to obstruct the view a little bit from that and try to make it look like that these guys are in a very nice spacious area and in a nice little uh, wild area for them to roam around in. I thought it looked very nice. These guys can't escape by any of the rock points by these viewing areas, which is very good. I was gonna add some plants around the rocks, but I couldn't really find anything good just to make it a little bit more difficult for them to actually try to escape, but we don't really have to worry about that, which is a very big plus considering I couldn't really find out a good plant to put in between there. I also considered putting a plant in between these two rocks over by the foliage box, but I end up just ignoring that. Um, and I guess the tapirs like to jump over that little rock section, which is actually kind of funny. So that it's kind of funny. I really like it. These guys really do enjoy their habitat. They are doing well over here. We also throw in some trees over by the wooden barrier section to obstruct the view uh, for our guests. We want to kind of put in a little backdrop so they don't really see a barrier. They see more of a habitat with trees and less of a man-made structure. Overall, I really like how this habitat came about. Just remember this is just one of our smaller habitats. It is very, it's more on the simplistic side, I would say. We will be adding much bigger and much more complex habitats as we complete the addition to our zoo. So there's a lot more to come. If you did like this video, please consider subscribing and liking the video as I am a small YouTube channel. We will be doing more on this zoo. Any comments? Let me know what you guys want to see next in this zoo for a species, or if you have any other feedback, please leave that down below in the comments. Join our Discord and follow me on any social media platforms. Links are in the description below. Other than that, I shall see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.